We now return to Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Opportunity Project, the radio show discussing honest truth about Illinois policy and politics. Here's AM 560's Dan Proft. Dan Proft back with Brian Timponi on this edition of Rising. And uh, Brian, some good news is uh, despite some of the financial travails facing Chicago and Illinois, we have managed to carve out uh, some money to uh, erect another monument to another politician. That's sort of kind of the big thing that we do in Illinois is uh, spend other people's money to iconi uh, to, to, to treat uh, political figures as iconics uh, and uh, provide the necessary statuary support for them. So you think Maggie Daly Park, um, you think JRTC. You think JRTC, the Thompson Center, James R. Thompson Center, absolutely. And uh, now we're on the cusp of Obama Land, uh, which is like, a, I don't know, it's sort of like a, a, a park and a re education center and a rec center and a community organizing cell. And uh, it's got a little nine hole miniature golf course, a lot of amenities. And so, uh, hey, Yes, he has a lot of friends in Hollywood, but you can't expect him to pull all of this weight himself. So uh, $224 million from the uh, state's uh, balanced, quote unquote, budget for this coming fiscal year has been set aside for uh, Obama land. And uh, hey, that's good news. Again, just more uh, more state you know, Democrat machine. Uh, using state money to get leverage over you know, their potential political foes in the party. I mean, this is a case where I'm certain uh, Obama could have maybe raised the money privately. Well, that's what they said they were going to do. It was all going to be private he money. But, but if you're Michael Madigan, why not just say, look, hey, we'll come up with it because no one's going to object. And then oh, he's got Obama in his pocket, too. Hey, I give you this money for your center. It's and a beautiful thing. To be fair, Madigan is uh, bipartisan on the topic. I mean, remember, uh, he and others were instrumental in setting aside $50,000 for a statute to Denny Haster, too. Right. And, and, but that, it, that project had to be discontinued. This is a setup for when Madigan finally retires, building the museum to Madigan, the monument. Maybe we'll na- rename Midway after him. Because obviously Madigan, worth honoring. I not think, the I think we may there. need like, like a big like Hall of Justice. <laughs> um, maybe this could be an annex for the, uh, you know, in Obama land where you have just the, the pantheon of all of the great politicians uh, is in statue form just lining the halls so that, you know, CPS has somewhere to go on field trips. For more on this topic, we're pleased to be joined by our friend Dennis Byrne, who uh, has taken up this topic himself. Of course, Dennis Byrne, Chicago-based writer. Uh, you see his work regularly in the Tribune, a number of outlets. He wrote about Obama land for the Weekly Standard earlier this month. Dennis, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. My pleasure. So um, in your piece, uh, you also uh, focused in on um, uh, the uh, actual green space, the land that is uh, being commandeered to uh, develop the sprawling Obama land. Can it give us your perspective on the valuable uh, lakefront property that uh, will be devoted to Obama land? Well, this is a cause that's near and dear to the hearts of the uh, preservationists, who mostly are progressives, uh, lakefront liberals, uh, people who drove uh, up the uh, crazy uh, uh, museum on the lakefront <laughs> wanted to uh, destroy the uh, Bears uh, rebuilding of Soldier Field. Uh, they, they're very, very picky about uh, what goes on the lakefront. Indeed, they have the law on their side. Uh, Lake Chicago's Lake Protection Ordinance, for one, uh, uh, the, uh, the part is in question is under the protection of the uh, Federal Historic Sites uh, protections. Uh, so this this should be uh, a major issue for them, placing this temple to uh, Obama, Obama's ideas and legacy in, in a public park. Now, here's the deal. Um, originally, it was supposed to be a presidential library, which is a public use. Uh, now it is not 
no longer a presidential library. It's the Obama Center, uh, which is a private use. The Obama Foundation is going to run this thing. It's going to uh, get its hands on it for a very cheap price, a dollar or something like that. Uh, all the revenues from parking and other concessions are going to go to the Obama Foundation, not to the public. Uh, and this, this is what gets me the most about this. Uh, because it's not a presidential library, this private foundation uh, dedicated to Obama's principles are, is going to be subsidized by uh, the public, a uh, public park plan for private use. Uh, this is just wrong. Uh, there's a lawsuit that, that's uh, been filed that contends this is uh, uh, illegal. And uh, we'll have to see where that lawsuit goes, but if uh, politics don't intervene, uh, then it should be uh, a very interesting lawsuit. But this is, this is sacred green. This is from a great front. This is where people go to recreate. This is a pride and joy of Chicago. And it's going to put this uh, huge monstrosity on the lakefront. It looks like a, uh, a power plant. I mean, it would size and it's going to dominate the human scale of the park. And it's going to constantly... Uh, this, this thing about the golf course, which nobody came up with until Obama... Uh, I guess he wants a golf course so he's, uh, in his uh, hometown, uh, near his uh, Kenwood home, that he can go to that's worthy of his uh, capabilities and his prestige. There are two public golf courses there now uh, that are affordable, that a lot of people from the neighborhood would like to play. But we're going to get a PGA-style golf course, just put it in there. And all we have are big guarantees uh, from the Obama uh, people that it still will be affordable. Well, this is bunk. Uh, and the whole thing is, is so disappointing. Uh, it is most disappointing is that the Chicago power structure, it, 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 uh, people who should be protecting the, uh, <clears throat> the lakefront, it all came in, and they're not really closely examining what this is all about. I wish they would. Uh, hi, Dennis. It's Brian Timponi. Uh, here's a question. It seems like it's a slam dunk case uh, that, that that they'll lose um, if politics don't intervene, which you would hope they wouldn't in the federal court. What does Obama do if if he does lose? What like, what's what is his alternative strategy? <laughs> The alternative is actually a better one. Uh, the the south side and the west side have all kinds of vacant land available. It's where I found the uh, uh, Dan Ryan. You see where the Robert Taylor homes and the rest of them. Uh, not all vacant land. All the people crying out for somebody to to uh, use this resource. Um, if if he decided that the parkland, or if he lost this uh, case, he could move it inland to where it would be better sited. It would be closer to the community. It would be closer to the spinoff economic effects uh, that it would have. The restaurants and the uh, tourist shops and, uh, and all the rest would be right there. It would be a boon to the neighborhoods, but he's not doing that. He's satisfies his ego, he's got to put it on the lakefront. This is insane. Well, maybe we, he could take it out to uh, L.A. with George Lucas after his museum got kicked out of town. Uh, he is he is Dennis Byrne, uh, Chicago-based writer. He has worked in the Tribune often. Uh, piece on uh, Obamaland in the Weekly Standard you want to check out. Dennis, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you.